All right, good morning, guys. We're back here over at Casone's RV. And big surprise, we got a roof to do. Let's go take a look at it. All right, so this is a 2005 Sunrise Itasca, which of course is a Winnebago. And this is a viewer who contacted me about a roof issue they were having. Pulled into a bay and then we'll see uh, about getting on the roof and seeing what's going on. I haven't been up there yet, but I did notice one thing already. The uh, ladder is pulling loose. Those are the wrong rivets. So that's been off before. Yikes. There we go. We're on a workhorse chassis in this one. This thing pulled in. Chad's going to guide me so I don't hit anything. Oh yeah, auto park. All right, let's go take a look at this thing. So this viewer contacted me and said that he's had a few issues with his roof. He's had uh, one outfit repair his roof before because it did blow off. Uh, and I guess ever since the repair, it hasn't not leaked. So he's been struggling with leaks for a while now. So he's asked me to replace the roof on it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the roof and see what we're looking at. All right, we're on the roof now and you might notice something a little bit different from right about here to there. This is the original Winnebago roof, and this is aluminum. Somebody made this. Might be able to show you the, the weird segmented brakes to make that radius. They did a good job making it. So remember I said, yeah, if you uh, go with a different type of roof, you're going to have to make your own radiuses. They made their own radiuses. It looks like they put a seam right there. Now, by all accounts, this has been leaking since it wasn't done. So he's been fighting this for a while. That's why he wants it done. And if I come to the other side... I don't know if you can see all this pooling. So it's definitely delaminated there. Luckily, he's just replaced the skylight and that vent. So I think we can salvage those. Uh, that one will get replaced. I don't know if you can see, there's some spider cracking right there because this is loose all the way down to there. And that's loose pretty bad. In fact, if I was a betting man, I'm a little concerned that at a low point in the roof right there yeah so we'll hopefully see what we can do there i don't know if we can do much and of course this whole section right there is delaminated don't know i was not expecting it to be quite this bad but you know we just did that one so, first step is just to get everything off of it. Tear it all apart. We've done this many times, so. If I find anything interesting, I'll let you guys know. Well, unfortunately, we did already replace the skylight because of some water damage. You can kind of see the damage right there. Hopefully, the new roof will solve a lot of it. It obviously won't fix the ceiling. And, uh, strangely enough, there was water coming out. You can see the drop that's right there. It came out of the screws for the AC filters. So it's a bit disarming. But other than that, I just got Chad up there taking the front cap apart so we can get it all loose. Okay, so I just pulled down that trim ring off the AC and maybe you guys can see how discolored that is because that's all wet. So it's definitely been leaking over here. I don't know why. But hopefully we're going to fix the problem, but it shouldn't be this wet down here. That's really alarming to me. When I get this AC pulled out, I'll go ahead and look at the condensate or the uh, drip pan underneath the evaporator to see if maybe it's cracked. Maybe that's letting water in that way. Because there's been no rain here in the last few days. It actually stopped raining here in Arizona. Now, I know he's coming from back east, but I don't remember where. Might be Louisiana. I'm sure it rains there once or twice a day. All right, so we got all those screws to the front cap off. Yeah. All the interior trims and packages for the inside off. Now it's just a matter of going outside. I could see something interesting. It was right here. Somebody needed to pull the ground, so they pulled that ground. Chilled out foam and ran it over there. I don't know where it's going to. Maybe over here? But that's clever.
I've had to do things like that before. And so the next step is going to be to take uh, the rear cap loose. Uh, that means taking the ladder off and then get up on the roof and start taking all the components off. So I'll just start right here at the beginning. Take that screw out. You know, there's more screws under that. Is there? Yeah. I like how you're doing that carefully so you don't break the paint. Just on this part. Just the on the paint. That's what doing this a lot of times teaches you, right? Yes. Yes. And yeah, this is a special Winnebago insert. Only Winnebago uses this stuff. And it's not readily. You can't get it very easily. And because it's painted, you don't want to have to paint it. repaint it again. It's very frustrating. Alright, so some of these aren't looking so good either here. Those are leaking too. Can see the rest on that one. I guess it is again. Yeah, that's the wrong sealant. So it's not sticking to the silicone that would have been on there. Well, we missed it, but you we see all that water coming out right there. I think it's safe to say these condensate drain holes are plugged. That's probably what the problem is there. We got a tag along right there. Get out of here. Okay, that's good news. That means the uh, drip pan's not cracked, otherwise it wouldn't be holding water. So we have to clear up those holes. Might assume the front one has the same issue since there's water running out of it too. Well, not as bad, but all we're gonna do, is go ahead and clear out that one. Hopefully. Now it'll drain again. It clogged. Yeah, it's pretty loose right there. I'm gonna assume we're gonna see some water damage underneath here, underneath there, and underneath there. Curious to see what this is gonna look at when we pull it up. All right, so we're just on the roof here, getting it ready. And uh, this is a newer vent. Now, Fantastic gives you this cool foam vent seal to use, but I've never seen these work very well. Those watermarks tell me that it didn't work. <laughs> it may not have worked. So I don't ever like to use this stuff. I don't like putty on these. I like sealant, actual sealant. It's hard to get this plastic flange to not pucker in between you know the screws. It makes it really easy to clean though now. <laughs> it does make it easy look, to clean. Look, look, look. It's been prepped. Prepped. Yeah. <laughs> Might have been leaking a little bit. Maybe there. Maybe and there. at each screw. And there, and then at literally every screw. Yeah, they're all rusted. <laughs> so I don't know who installed the vent, but that's likely why this repair was still leaking. But I don't know. I don't know lots of things. Because when the factory or whatever service station did it, they cut around that that vent. They didn't. That's weird. I mean, I would have at least gone completely around it. If I was gonna do that, right? Oh, with the repair? Yeah. So let the vent kind of sandwich it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird. That was kind of lazy. You did all that work and notched it around the vent to make a, a whoa. whoa to make a ceiling point captured in between two flanges. That's that's not a good idea. But you do what you can when you can. You know that he changed out this skylight, and Winnebago uses weird Z brackets to hold the skylight down. It's not screwed down. But unless you get every little bit of the silicone sealant off of it, this stuff's never gonna stick. It just peels off. Yeah. Like this. Like what? Oh, look at that. Almost no effort. And there's you, this, the original. You, know, uh, you scraped off the uh, sealant. Original Nuplex. Yeah, so important on Winnebago unless you completely take this stuff all the way down with like a wire brush and acetone you need to get every little microscopic layer of a silicone off of it or else it won't stick so it's a mess might as well just use the right sealant otherwise it's not really doing anything wouldn't you say Chad yeah that yeah, doesn't stick we have to protect this one we need the skylight those are like six hundred dollars now <laughs> plus shipping plus shipping touching a little bit there and a little there yeah these Winnebago uh, skylights 
this putty tape's not going to do anything because putty works on compression it has to be compressed and we're not even putting screws through the flange so this wasn't sealing at all i think it only touched there and on two and corners at the bracket some of the brackets you can see water's just been getting in there that's probably why the roof looks the way it does but luckily the skylight came up okay and we're going to replace all the other parts that are bad great it wasn't really attached <laughs> All right, so we get under this duct tape that was just temporary for the drive here. You can see metal, the fiberglass that uses transition molding. Pretty standard RV stuff, but now it's not a seamless roof. Call that a seamed roof. It's now a seamed roof. It's like a safari. Yeah. Well, it looks like the repairs that the shop did did hold because it got back far enough. That is to say the screws aren't rusted, so that's a good sign. All right, well, that's pretty interesting. As I pulled that up, you could see that was not the shiny aluminum I was expecting to see. This is galvanized. I don't even know if it's galvanized steel, but this is magnetic. And uh, so they use steel. I would not recommend steel in this application, even painted, because it's going to rust. And uh, yeah, that's crazy. That should have been aluminum. But that would be pretty simple. Whoever put this down did a decent job. I'm not sure what they put it down with, but it's glued down really well. <sighs> Looks like maybe Sikaflex. So that's gonna be a little bit extra work. I mean, it was done well, would you say? Yeah. I, as well as I guess they could do. It's still rotten under there. Go for it. Well, it's easier way of doing it, pulling up the fire line at the same time. Huh. Guys, that was awful. This thing's heavy and it's hot. Yeah, it's like 40 pounds of, 50 pounds of metal. <laughs> That's heavy as can be. You can see on this side all the glue they put in. You know, it's also been a while since we've done this is what we can see. Yeah. concert series. Uh, like almost two years now. Uh, I guess it worked. Well, at the very least, you can see where uh, he did lose most of his roof. Right about there. There was some water damage for sure. Looks like water damage goes up this way too. We'll find out more once we pull out the rest of this. We're almost ready to do that. All right, so definitely there was like five satellite dishes here that have been removed. It was definitely leaking here before too. So that's not a good sign. Uh, the next step is just getting this awning off we just have to unbolt it from the top, unbolt it from the bottom, lift the whole thing up off out of the way. So I think one of the first ones I'm going to show you, well, I mean, we just did that one. We haven't screwed that awning back on yet. So this awning reel actually screws into that aluminum radius that is actually there. So I'm going to pick this up and get the roof off to see where it screws on. Should you be interested. Now you can see the radius where it screws in right there. And sure enough, it was leaking there too. Why, why not? Cool. Let's get this off. Like drywall screws, too. <laughs> that was the satellite screws. There's a lot of holes in this roof. Yeah. I don't think they had enough holes. So you have like five different satellites on. <laughs> Might have been a leak there. So of course, like everything, it's something always else. Uh, this roof is supposed to be... <laughs> Uh, level with the top of that and it's not it's loose it blows in the middle pretty good I bet if Chad walks on it you could watch it my, oof. yeah that's not so good see over here it's it stays there really yeah uh, okay wonderful All right, so that was definitely something I didn't want to have happen right there. Put you down in there. Vent was leaking, but we already knew that because the gasket seal didn't work. Was that enough rivets, Chad? Holy crap. High density insulation foam. It should take away a lot of the weight. Uh, 
keep expectations low. Whoever installed this ladder the last time didn't install it very well. So I can just pull these rivets out. So I have to, get to reinstall that. Cap lap seal. But I think it's pretty vital about because I've seen too many uh, Winnebago roofs leaking right from that point. I think that's a pretty good rundown. And I feel pretty good about this roof, guys. This one's gonna fight us? I think so too. I see. Oh wait, you know what I see? I see daylight right there. That's the problem. This AC's loose. No wait, that's not the problem. Sounds like quitter talk to me. You know, an RV tech would you use anything that was on his hand. Well, I tried to use my knife, but it was going to break it. I've been massacring butterflies in Arizona this weekend, too. I always feel bad about it. No, I'm I think we need to go inside and cool off for a second. All right, I think with that... <laughs> nice.